Thank you, and thanks for having me back, despite having met me before. Um, it's always an honor to be asked to give a keynote. Um, actually, I don't get asked that often, so I don't want to make it sound like I do keynotes all the time, because I don't. Um, but one of the really cool things about doing a keynote is, you know, normally you're presenting material that you really know inside out and you've been working on maybe for years and you've got your latest, greatest exploit and you can't wait to show it. Um, but with a keynote, you get to take a, a kind of step back and look at the bigger picture and realize we're all doomed, basically. So, <laughs> so that was fun and interesting. Um, so before we start, I'll just give you a bit, a bit of background. Uh, Aperture Labs is my company. It's a very small company. There's two of us, basically. We do uh, research into embedded systems. And we do a lot of work uh, in CNI, um, assurance stuff, looking at smart meters and that kind of thing. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm the um, code monkey, basically. And uh, my partner is chip monkey. So he looks at all the hardware stuff, scary analog and weird chemicals and bad stuff like that. And I, I deal with all the nice bits and bytes and try and make sanity out of it. Uh, as I say, we're very small. We work, um, we tend to work in, you know, we get called in as specialists in, in teams that are doing a bigger job, or we'll put the job together and we just focus on the bit we're good at and get other people in. I personally, um, I'm old school. I've been doing this for a very, very long time, um, actually since the 80s. Uh, I do describe myself as a hacker, not a security consultant, because um, hacking's cool now, right? Um, so when you're trying to impress a girl, if I'm at dinner and I'm telling people what I do, I do say I'm a hacker. Well, actually, normally I open with I'm a porn star, um, but depending how they react, I may switch back to I'm a hacker. But, um, but hacking's cool now, so it's okay to say you're a hacker. Uh, I'm involved in DEF CON. I'm uh, staff there, again, for way too long. 19 years now, I've been lurking in a back room at DEF CON. Uh, if you ever come, how many people here have been to DEF CON? Loads of you, okay. You probably never will have seen me unless I happen to be giving a talk or pushing a, a load of Pelican cases around some back alley somewhere in the conference. But if you're there, come and see me. I hang out in QM stores. Uh, if you're in London last Tuesday of the month, so next Tuesday, um, we have a, a regular monthly meeting in central London. We take over a pub, well, we take over the ground floor of a pub, or cellar of a pub, actually. Um, we have a couple of talks. It's actually really good. We, we usually have around 100 people show up, so uh, totally free. Anyone can walk in, and we're always looking for material. So if anyone wants to come and give a, an off-the-cuff talk, um, I try and open source pretty much everything I do. I'm a terrible blogger, so my blog, I don't think I've, I've put anything on it for at least a year. Um, but if I do anything I consider interesting or exciting, I tend to, to try and remember to blog about it. But I will almost certainly publish it, even if I don't get around to blogging it. So what I'm legally allowed to publish, I do. OK, so before we get started, we'll go through some disclaimers so I don't get sued. Um, obviously, my opinions, comments are my own, not necessarily those of my company, although the company's half me, so... <laughs> Probably mostly true. Um, bunch of images and video clips in this talk, which um, all copyright their respective owners. And you should obviously respect copyright. I'm a great believer in respecting copyright. I try not to, to rip things off, but in this case. So if I have ripped off your ship, I'm sorry. Um. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? If you're going to try and stop me from ripping your stuff, do it properly. It's just embarrassing. But on the other hand, some people take this stuff really seriously. You know. um, we're going to talk about a lot of products here. And obviously, those products mean a lot to people. So what I mean by this is if, if I 
say something bad about your product, I'm, I'm, I apologize. I'm taking things out of context, and I'm, I, you know, I understand your baby is actually really cute and cuddly, whatever it is. Um, but I'm probably going to take the piss out of it. Okay, so. And for everything else that happens, I apologize in advance. So we're going to talk about the Internet of Things. Uh, that's the main uh, overarching subject. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what it is. And then that. Well, actually, that was my original plan. But then I realized, you know, you've been in Amsterdam a couple of days. You're probably a bit tired and hungover. Probably got a bit of a rash developing. Um, it's definitely going to hurt when you pee by the time you get home. Um, so I didn't want to bum you out too much, so I, I changed that. So we're actually going to talk about the WWW of things, which is the weird, the wonderful, and the worrying. So you'll see as we go along, I've kind of, as I found each thing to talk about, I just gave it a general category. At the top of the slide, there'll be a weird, a wonderful, or a worrying, and they're not necessarily in any particular order anymore. They were when I started, but it's all gone crazy since then, so... And then, if we've got time at the end, we'll discuss why we care about this. Actually, my time is not running, so I assume I've got all the time in the world. Um, I'm not tracking. And it's only a coffee break afterwards, right? So. so first, I'll let you feast your eyes on that. That's um, a very well thought out, lucid, sensible slide, which clearly I didn't produce. Um, someone at SRI Consulting did. And that's probably the last slide in the whole talk that makes any sense. The rest of it can only be described as um, a slowly evolving train crash, I guess. But one of those things you just, you know, you want to look away, but you can't. So this is actually quite um, accurate. When I found it, it's like, okay, well, when I first came across the term Internet of Things, it did seem to apply just to RFID. And I was doing a lot of work in RFID at the time. Uh, and it was just like, OK, let's use RFID tags instead of typing in a URL. So this is like a shortcut that linked you to something else. And that's when they started like linking RFID tags to the internet, because you would go BIP, and it would launch your browser and go somewhere, or some, something like that. And it's gradually evolved. As the sensors have got better and cheaper and we're embedding more stuff into things, um, the Internet of Things has actually started expanding until we're, you know, we're actually overtaking this um, timeline. In 2020, it's like we're way past what, what they're saying is going to happen by then. In fact, you know, it's evolved to the state where it's just everything. Everything is part of Internet of Things, and actually even graphic designers can't get a handle on it anymore. Like, how do I represent the Internet of Things? Because it's just everything. Um, you know, it works in farms, um, in infrastructure, schools. School kids are going to learn all about stuff. There'll be teachers drawing little diagrams. It's going to go in the cloud. You know, every, cities are going to be smart cities talking to each other. If you've got a logo, that will be in there somewhere, you know, a brand. Um, there's going to be an academy where you learn all about the Internet of Things. Um, I wouldn't put my power station next to the burning forest, but, you know, Internet of Things, you can do what you want. It's kind of a free-for-all. Everyone can, can play. It's going to be, you know, things will be in space. You know, we're, we're going to have laptops orbiting the planet. And you'll be able to scoop that up and take it with you when you go to work. It's going to be wonderful. We have men made of stars and cities that talk to men made of stars. Buildings that are so complicated there's no room for labels anymore. Um, trains that carry enormous radio stations. Uh, just crazy. The Internet of Things is crazy. Oh, X-ray watch that tells you if you're a cyborg. That's my favorite. So, the, you know, the pace of change is just unbelievable. Everything's happening, everything's being connected, everything's being thrown in together. And as a security guy, that's a problem. So 
So that's pretty much my mantra as a security guy. Yeah. If I come along to look at your product, I'm going to tell you it's broken. And if you change it, you're going to break it even worse. So you know, you're screwed either way. That's my job. I, I'm here to give you problems, not solutions. Um, that's your problem. OK, so now we've kind of set the ground rules. Um, let's start looking at some of the stuff that's out there. Um, and you know, life is confusing. And the Internet of Things, there's a lot of gadgets that will help you um, to understand how to interact with this crazy world we live in and to make it more fun. And one of the first I came across when I was researching this answers this question. So if you've ever been in a relationship, you know this, this is a bad question. You never want to hear this. This is a trap. Okay. There's no correct answer to this question. Unless you've really got your A game on and you answer like at the slightest hesitation or nuance in your voice, you're going to be in so much trouble. So if the Internet of Things can answer that question for us, so if you get it wrong, this is going to happen. Can you hear that? So you don't want that kind of shit, right? You don't want to get divorced because you answer the question wrong. So um, the Internet of Things is going to help us by answering that question for you. Naked may look like a mirror at first glance, but it's not like any mirror I've ever seen. When I look into other mirrors, all I see is a reflection. I see today. But the truth is so much more than that. Naked shows me my truth. My truth is sweat. Early mornings. One more rep. One more mile. One more second. I'm stronger than I think. I can go further than I thought. The honest naked truth is that what I look like today is not a moment frozen in time. My body is the reflection of my journey my choices that's where naked helps me see my true self naked is a 3d fitness tracker that keeps me motivated by showing me my progress i can instantly get my exact measurements body fat percentage and weight and with heat maps of muscle gain and fat loss side by side comparisons and time lapse of my body's changes i know where i am where i'm going and how to get there I'm on a journey to become my best self. This is me, naked. Pretty amazing, huh? So I never have to answer that question. It's like, look at your 3D model. You answer the question. Trouble is that they can turn this around and point it back at you. So.
have a term for that. It's called pussy whipped. <laughs> so I don't know what his reward was for, for that, but, you know. And I don't know if you noticed, but his breakfast was one grape, okay? So that, that's not breakfast in my house. In my house. <laughs> this is actually one of the most awesome things on the internet. A little bit more. There you go. Oh, you don't want to spoil it with too much vermouth, right? So, done. I don't know how we ever managed before the Internet of Things. <laughs> and Kickstarter, of course. Thank you, Kickstarter. But actually, obviously, as a geek, I can't cook. But I do still need a proper breakfast. So if only there was something. Internet of Things, please help me. So even as a geek, I can now cook the perfect meal. And I know it's going to be perfect because the pan told me I got the ingredients right, I got the time right, everything's wonderful. But I'm not going to just sit down and eat it, right? Are you crazy? I have to put it on my smart plate, <laughs> and my smart plate will tell me if I'm allowed to eat it. No. In this case, I'm not allowed to eat the lovely pasta. I have to eat some white bread. Some white toast. I'd rather have four fried chickens and a Coke, but now I get white toast. Um, so that's what I'm going to eat, because that's the healthy option. <coughs> oh, uh, as we go through, I've, I've added these, like, pro tips. So if I spot something I think we can improve upon, I'll give you a pro tip. Um, and my tip here is, yeah, you don't eat white bread at 1.30 in the morning. A kebab is way, way better. So. That soaks up the alcohol. So. And this is a smart spoon. How can you have breakfast without a smart spoon? Um, its sole function seems to be to tell you not to put uh, mustard in your coffee, because that's disgusting. So, I've tried it. It's actually disgusting. And then, having had a hearty breakfast, it's now time to get dressed. So obviously, we need Internet of Things to help us do this properly. Um, <clears throat> if you're a lady of the female persuasion, obviously you need the ultimate bra. I don't know if you can read that from there, but this makes you be the boss, and uh, you'll have real-time biometrics. So we all need that. <clears throat> obviously you need some digital panties, because Internet of Things. Oh, and some, uh, <clears throat> as well as the pro tips, I've got the... 
the hacking advice. Okay. So um, I love the way he's just casually hanging on the, the no hacker sign. You know. It's like I can be bad anytime I like. So clearly, um, again, I don't know if you can see the writing here, but we're seeing a repeating pattern in this. So they've obviously used ECB mode, which is why would you do that? So hacker advice, do not use ECB mode. If you're a guy, it's a lot simpler. You have this lovely digital onesie you can put on. Now, here's a great invention. So I don't know about you, but I always have trouble keeping track of how many socks I've put on. Okay? <laughs> and they've solved this problem for us now. So with digital socks, that's no longer an issue. So you have your digital sock and you have this I'm not sure where you wear that. It looks kind of uncomfortable. Um, but never mind. You're wearing it. And as we can see, the app is telling us, well, I can see your right foot. And if I don't see your left foot in about 36 seconds, uh, I'm calling an ambulance because <laughs> you've got a problem. Great innovation. No more sock misery. Um, digital gloves, obviously. You need those smart gloves. Um, I'm not sure what the snake's for, but he's a little friend you can take with you. Um, haven't figured that one out yet. <laughs> Before you leave the house, obviously, you look in your smart mirror, and the smart mirror tells you if you're fit to go. So it gives you a score, even. Um, it can tell how much booze you've had, um, everything. I mean, it just, yeah, one glance and it knows. And again, my pro tip, you can't possibly leave the house with that score. Jesus, come on. So you need to moisturize. Um, I like this mask um, because it's hipster friendly. You know, there's no reason you can't have a big lumberjack beard and not be moist at the same time. So it doesn't cover the whole face. <clears throat> Obviously, you need to brush your teeth. In the brave news, uh, Internet of Things world, I mean, I just leave mine like that to, to do it while I'm doing all the other things. You know, so. And you've got to floss, otherwise it's going to tweet that you have poor dental hygiene. So. And then all your friends will know. So now you've got dressed and you suddenly realize, oh, forgot to go number two. But luckily, your smart toilet will tell you. It's like, how many times have you... Did you go yet? Did you go before you went out? You should have gone before you went out. But now, smartphones will tell you. Um, smart toilets will tell you. Now, it's pretty self-explanatory what a smart toilet's going to do. But even so, the manufacturer has helpfully put this information on his website. I promise I have not tampered with these. These are directly from the manufacturer's website. So. Informative, to the point, succinct. And because you did it all backwards, now you have to strip off, get back in the shower. <coughs> now, I was going to make this a pro tip, but it's pretty damn obvious. Um, I didn't think it was worth wasting a pro tip sticker on it. Um, wearing Google Glass into the shower does not make it a smart shower. Okay? <laughs> it makes you a dumbass. Probably broken your Google Glass now. I have no idea what this is. I put it in because I know there's some people from um, San Francisco here. Maybe they can explain. Some magical Internet of Things device that you walk towards it and um, it cleans you. I don't know. What, what does it do? Anyone know? No. It's magic. Internet of Things is magic. Okay, so you've had your shower, you've got dressed again, you've got your smart shirt on. Don't know what that does, but it's clearly a smart shirt. You've got your smart shoes on. This is what you get if you search for smart pants, okay? So I had to search for smart trousers. Um, see what they did there? Internet of trousers, ha uh -huh. IoT. You've got your smart hoodie. 
And because you're a cyclist in Amsterdam, you've got your airbag smart jacket thing. It's the way of the future, I tell you. And I don't know about you, but at this point, I will have worked up quite a sweat um, getting all this stuff together. I came across this. So there's a lot of stuff for hydration, but this is a particularly special one for people who sweat. Okay. Everyone else, forget it. You need a different product. But if you sweat, this one's for you. Okay, one last thing to check before we leave the house. Shall we play a game? And here your gaming console is going to help. We started with a sensor that turned voice and movement into magic. Xbox, what? We thought this would be fun to play with. And it was. But something amazing is happening. The world is starting to imagine things we hadn't even thought of. Okay, so you get it. The Xbox can see you and it reacts to, to what you're doing. That's what could be wrong with that? The new Xbox One, set to be released later this week, can see your penis. That's the shocking discovery made by Fast Company Designs' Mark Wilson. After uploading a video analysis of the new console's features, Wilson wrote, quote, While I'd intended to post the above tech demo of the improved Kinect from Microsoft Research, I noticed, alongside the intricacies of a hoodie and jeans, and there's no graceful way to say this, a dong. That's right, the Kinect system's infrared camera is now so sensitive that similar to a TSA millimeter wave body scanner, it shows a clear outline of your genitalia. Wilson also reveals his embarrassment in noticing how the system picked up the outline of his own penis during Xbox One testing at Microsoft's campus in Redmond. Taken on its own, this might be easy to dismiss, but when you consider the fact that Microsoft, maker of the Xbox, was deeply embroiled in the NSA wiretapping scandal, allowing the snooping agency backdoor access to spy on users of its services, things begin to get unsettling. The user will not be able to power on the new Xbox One without first enabling Kinect and standing in front of its camera. The system also requires that it be connected to the internet at least once every 24 hours. The device will also track your eye movements to record which ads you watch, as well as using its array of microphones to enable voice interactivity and distinguish your voice from other people in the room. So I guess we just have to trust that Microsoft won't record and pass on the audio of our conversations to the NSA, just like it did with the data of other individuals who use its Microsoft services. Pretty freaky, huh? Um, so anyway, if you want to make that test before you go out that you're NSA wearing NSA approved power, then um, that will help you. No, oh, and then your fridge magnet's going to talk to you when you when you leave the building. Hi, I'm Matt. You know, actually, watch before we watch this one, you have to notice how earnest this guy is. I mean, these guys they love their product, and just just watch his face. It's it's lovely. Hi, I'm Matt. You know, a lot of companies these days are thinking about how to get a new device into your life. And here at Moonwood Labs, we like to think more about why. Why not take a proven tool and make it that much better? Senior is an always-on digital sticky hook. It's got an e-paper touchscreen and a peel-and-stick non-damaging mount. It provides easy, hands-free access to notes, updates, and controls. This is actually really cool. I mean, when I wrote my abstract for this talk, I hadn't come across this. And I, in the abstract, it does actually mention a, a, a whiteboard um, post-it note kind of automatic messagey thing. Um, and sure enough, someone's done it, obviously. Any good idea you have, someone's already done it. So yeah, this will tell you if it's raining outside, basically. Okay. So you need an umbrella as you leave the house. <coughs> IoT can also help with your everyday tasks. I'm worried now. I'm wearing, no, it causes feedback, so. But he's got, can you just turn this one up? Are you having trouble hearing me? I'm, I'm mumbling too much. Oh, the video, we're using that one. Okay, I'll try.
try with that one as well. So we had a problem this morning with um, my microphone output, my headphone output. Okay, so IoT can also help with everyday tasks. Um, so we've established that it can weigh you and measure you and so on. Um, but can it weigh my baby? And how often does my baby poop? How much does the poop weigh? Obviously, I really need to know. Being a new parent is exhilarating and exhausting. It's a little harder. Don't worry. You know, you never know what to do with a newborn when you bring them home. This whole experience about being a mom is unlike anything anybody can prepare you for. We developed the smart changing pads to make it easy to track your baby's weight, feedings, diaper changes. All the information syncs to your phone so you can see how your baby is growing. Tell how much your baby nurses during a feeding and keep track of how much your baby's sleeping. I was really anxious about whether I was making enough milk but after using the smart changing pad, it showed me that I was actually producing more milk nursing than I was pumping. I was so relieved. Checking my baby's so weight as part of our regular routine gives me comfort that my baby's... So how cool is that? You just... Internet of things to the rescue yet again. But, I mean, that's only the beginning. I, I think in the future what we'll see is you just connect directly to the implants in your baby's brain. You read out the information you need, and you can send commands in. So fill your diaper. There we go. OK. Sorted. And it can help you improve your skills. Some things are just hard. You know, they really are. And the Internet of Things can help with that. So lying in the sun, for example, that's, that's tricky. <laughs> there listening to a whirring fan. Oh, time's up. So I'm well on the way to solving all of my little problems. Again, Standing, walking, that's a doddle. Sitting, fool. That can be You're tricky. You're in for another long day, and your papers are already piled up. Oh, and Irvin just remembered to give you that order that was due two days ago. Stupid Irvin. It's already 1.22, and there's more work to be done. Then the back pains strike. But take a look over there. That's Sally. And Sally isn't worried about being stressed or dealing with unnecessary back pains. Why? She uses Dharma. And with Dharma, she sits smart. Using highly sensitive fiber optic sensors, Dharma measures precisely how you sit. Then, through the Dharma app, it coaches you to sit better. And also tell you if she had beans for breakfast. No one should sit for too long. Dharma has a built-in timer and reminds you when it's the right time to stand up. Sometimes people have bad sitting habits by learning how you sit. Dharma guides you through specific stretches to counteract those bad habits. So you get the idea. Funny thing is, this is a real thing. That's, that's obviously made it to market now, because having looked for it, I'm constantly being bombarded with adverts to buy the damn thing now. So my Amazon cart is preloaded with half a dozen dharmas. <laughs> And actually, IoT, anything you can think of wanting to do better, IoT can help you. You want to be the best at everything you do, right? If picking your nose is your thing, then we can help.
And sometimes it, it will remind you, you know, in daily life you can be just going about your business and you just completely forget there's something that you really need to do. Um, I forget this important thing. It's something I do every day, but sometimes I forget to do it. And I want a smart device to just remind me to do this thing. Oh, and pro tip again, um, if you're going to design a sensor that is to be used like every day, then it needs to be invisible or unobtrusive, or at least look really cool. So if it looks like this, that, that's no. Okay. Looks like this. You're cool. Who doesn't love a Bluetooth headset? So anyway, I'm trying to remember the smart, important thing. Okay, no, that one fails on both counts. It's neither unobtrusive nor cool looking. Yeah, it's getting there. I mean, it looks kind of cool, but still a little bit over the top. If you don't mind looking like the Borg, then that's okay. But now we have a real solution. This one is going to work. Your breath reflects your state of mind. See, this is important stuff. She was about to die. She'd forgotten to breathe, okay? Reminded her to breathe, back to life. Everything's good. <laughs> Bedtime. Our sleep is very important to us. So we decided to do something about it and redesign every aspect of how beds and mattresses are made and function. <laughs> Where Beluga comes from is that we're trying to utilize modern design and technology to produce beds that you have full control so that you can customize in any way you wish. The air cell suspension system is very unique. Okay, you get it. It's a smart bed. Um, that was a thinly disguised uh, ploy to introduce the next topic, and I'm running a bit short of time, so I'm not going to bother with that, that film. So, speaking of bedtime, obviously... Um, we have the whole sex toy industry. And this is crazy. I mean, I could have done this entire talk just on sex toys. You guys just can't get enough of this stuff. And combining functions, uh, I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> but, well, hey, you can do it. There's a Bluetooth connection, send audio down it. Who, who knows what might happen? But yeah, I mean, like I say, this could have been hundreds and hundreds of slides on this topic. The only reason I stopped where I did was because, like most speakers, I leave everything to the last minute. So I was like doing this on the train, and I'm adding slides, and I'm working away, and I'm in my little bubble. And then I realized that all the chatter in the coach behind me is gone, and it's really quiet. And I kind of look around, and yeah, it's, you don't want to be doing this on the train. Okay? It's for a talk, honestly. Yeah, just re weird and crazy stuff. Uh, there's loads of them. Um, I like this one because it, it thinks about discreteness, you know. Uh, if you're going to have one of these devices, you don't want to be using a great big obvious handheld thing, you know, put it on a wristwatch, that's, that makes it a little more discreet. Um, and actually distance, distance is the key. When you're doing weird robot sex, distance is the key. Okay. <laughs> And here they've got this exactly right. I mean, if I'm doing you from behind, 10 feet is fine, because <laughs> you can't see me, right? Anyway, you're looking the other way. But if I'm in front of you, 30 feet's good, because I'm just you know, some guy back there <laughs> fiddling with you from 30 feet away. So it's great. I like that they've thought about stuff like that. They're meeting my needs, and yours, obviously. Um, not just for the ladies, so um, there are some sex toys that are actually trying to 
work for couples as well. But as you can see, this campaign failed. I mean, they only got halfway through. Campaign's over. This is obviously a toy that's designed to work with the male involved as well. Um, but girls don't want that. They don't want cyborgs. They want full-on robots, okay? No men involved. So that failed. Not interested. On the, uh, on the other hand, this guy, he's only halfway through his campaign. He's already gone over. So they're going to get built. Um, but this is for ladies only. And actually, everything I looked at is for ladies only. And that answers one of the questions. There's this ongoing debate, you know. Are there enough women in tech? And this doesn't answer that question, but it certainly answers the question, is there enough tech in women? <laughs> and I think the answer is yes, there's plenty. There's no shortage. Um, but we are missing one important um, market. And, you know, it's pretty obvious, and I'm surprised I couldn't find more for that market. But, you know, you've got your, your classic computer nerd, sort of sad geek, spends all day in front of a computer, probably wears a black T-shirt, you know, Oh, crap. Uh, yeah, so your typical computer nerd. And there's nothing. There's nothing for him. So um, we got you covered. You can reuse existing technology. Okay. And this guy actually gives you important information as you go along. So I think it could be a winner. And by reusing other technologies, you know when you're done. So. Okay, enough about fantasizing. What about actually getting Internet of Things involved in the real thing? So this is, I think the video will start in a second. So in the old days, it worked like this, you know, guy meets girl, chemistry. In this case, old guy meets attractive younger woman. Chemistry. So they can just discard their tech, get rid of it. Well, it's getting in the way. Take that off, take that off. Get down to business. That's how it used to be done. Internet of Things? No, it's not going to work like that anymore. Your devices will decide if the time is right, OK? And another few important things like, is it consensual? You know, uh, are you actually um, supposed to be having sex at this point? And if not, I haven't quite worked out what's going to happen next, but there should be some automatic like, response if, if everything's wrong and it shouldn't be happening. Um, maybe it can taser you or something uh, if you're wearing flares or um, you're trying to do something you shouldn't. Now, testing on this is tricky. You know, we can't go around zapping humans. Um, so we've been testing it on a dog. And it's not perfect yet, but at least with this version, when the dog dies, it leaves a chalk outline. So the forensics guys can figure out what happened. We're making progress. But um, in the real world, again, this is real technology. So here we have a smart bra. Um, that detects the woman's heart rate. And based on the heart rate, it's going to decide, do you get to second base? So app calculates, the app calculates the heart rate, and if it's the true love heart rate, the bra opens, <laughs> you carry on. This is a real product. This is real. I, I'm not making this shit up. Now, the hackers in the room, obviously, they can see the flaw in this plan. Well, if it's just based on the heart rate, well, you know, she can 
run on the spot, or I can chase around the bed, you know. We'll get that rate up and bam. But no, scientists have figured out that when women run, their boobs bounce. And that creates strain on the straps. I mean, I knew this because I watched Baywatch, but you know. <laughs> scientists did a lot of research and they, they worked that out. So I think by combining the two, we can solve that problem. So if you're trying to hack the system, no. And we'll work the digital panties in there somehow as well. So it's all good. Digital pills. Again, this is a real thing. You're going to swallow the pill. It's going to start sending messages back to the outside world. So automatic morning after pill, I don't know. Crazy. Yeah. I need another drink after that. I have run out of time. I'm, I'm overrunning now, and I don't care. But please, put your hands up and tell me to stop if, if your eyes can't take any more. Uh, we've lost sound on that one, and I wanted something stronger anyway, so. Okay, so back to normal programming. Um, we are actually running out of time, so I'm just going to skip through these. Some of the, um, the more worrying Introducing things. August Smart Keypad. A convenient way to lock and unlock your August Smart Lock using unique entry codes. The August Smart Keypad is simple to set up, easy to use, and controls your August Smart Lock via Bluetooth. With the August Smart Key... There's a lot of that. I mean, locks, digital locks and so on, becoming really common, um, or IoT locks. When it first arrived from Amazon, I didn't know what it was. What is it? You'll see. Is it for me? It's for everyone. It's called Amazon Echo. How's it going? Uh, I'm just finishing up right now. Is it on? Oh, it's always on. Can it hear me right now? Uh, no, it only hears you when you use the wake word we chose. Alexa. Well, what does it do? Alexa, what do you do? I can play music, answer questions, get the news and weather, create to-do lists, and much more. Awesome. Huh. Alexa, play rock music. Rock music. Alexa, stop. We are on Alexa, what time is it? The time is 3.27. You actually don't have to yell at it, okay? It uses far-field technology, so it can hear you from anywhere in the room. Far-field technology. I feel safer now. It's listening to me anywhere in the room. What could possibly go wrong? Um, and yeah, this stuff's worrying. We're putting more and more, more technologies which are just intruding into our lives and snooping on everything we do. And we're, just, we're not just taking it for granted. We're paying to have this crap in our hands um, and feeding back to who knows where. Um, Say you have a smart light bulb. It's smart because you can control it from your phone. You can turn it off or on. Okay, this is Hive. A um, few different products that are trying to tie all this stuff together because as you've seen, I mean, before I even get the hat out of the house, I've got about, you know, 60 pounds of equipment strapped to my body. So I need some kind of overriding system that's going to manage it all. Um, so, yeah, just wrapping up. Why is this a problem? There's just too many um, uh, attack vectors. Uh, Zigbee, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, everything is, is starting to, to overlap. The standards are not keeping up. Um, products are coming out there before standards have even been defined, let alone ratified or applied to those particular products. Um, we got government um, initiatives to actually make this stuff uh, not just recommended but like compulsory. So things like smart metering, um, government are introducing things, uh, CADS, um, consumer access device, which is going to connect to all your Internet of Things devices in the house, your smart meters and everything else. So, um, you know, Zigbee is a big driver uh, because of smart metering, um, certainly in, in UK, I guess, here as well. And the problem, the obvious problem with Zigbee is it doesn't respect um, barriers. I mean, as you can see, this is... Uh, a, a, a diagram of how someone is showing the devices in your house talking to each other. 
But clearly, you know, if there's a house next door that's also got Zigbee devices, they're talking to each other as well, and there's no reason that that can't happen, that you start sending messages to your neighbor's devices. And in fact, we've done a lot of testing with third-party devices to see who will route traffic for who. Um, and it's just built in, it's in the design that um, even if you don't recognize a device, you'll, you'll just route the packets for it and, and create these mesh networks. Um, and so, you know, as a result, products are kind of being developed as if they're the only thing they have to care about. Um, and they're, but they're doing it using these standards that allow them to interact with other products. And nobody seems to be really worrying too much about the consequence of that. And the main consequence, again, which I mentioned in an earlier slide, is the one-to-one -one attack becomes the one-to-many. So <clears throat> in the old days, if I wanted to attack you via Zigbee, I would have to go and sit up. I can't believe we're talking about Zigbee as old days, but I would drive outside your house and I can attack your Zigbee devices. Um, if every house is full of Zigbee devices that can maybe be hacked externally by other means, then I now can sit at home attacking your Zigbee devices um, via some other route. So. <clears throat> and the risks are getting greater. It's not um, simply financial or IP theft anymore. Um, we're talking physical security, you know, devices, home doors are being connected. If I can use your smart meters to tell me you're not at home and then go and unlock your doors and walk in and disable your alarm, um, or I can you know, cause a major blackout on the power grid, um, clearly that's a problem. SCADA devices that are connected. Um, and we as a company uh, are still seeing the same problems that we were seeing 10 years ago. Everything's just getting recycled. Um, so again, these things aren't being designed with security from the ground up, and that's a, that's a real problem. The technical talk I'm currently working on is using an attack vector, um, which was literally the first, it's, it's on the same, a lot of the, the, the subject matter is the same as the very first talk I gave like 15 years ago. So literally nothing has changed. It's, it's kind of insane. We are in coffee break time, so it's your choice if we want to have any questions or just um, call it a day. So. Questions from the floor? No? Shocked silence. I apologize. <laughs> Maybe off the floor, then we might ask whether our butt's too big. <laughs> Thank you, Adam Laurie. Thank you very Thank much you. for your keynote this morning.